When we add Spring Security to our application, all requests are immediately being blocked. That is because Spring Default Protection is making sure that only authenticated and authorized users do have access. It also blocks all malicious requests that can potentially exploit our application. That defense is based on something we talked about extensively in this course, and those are Spring filters. Spring actually employs multiple security filters out of the box. Some of them are CSRF filter, as the name implies, this filter protects against common CSRF attacks. We also have basic authentication filter, which implements basic authentication strategy. Exception translation filter that catches exception that was thrown in any of the previous filters. All of those filters are part of security filter chain. If you followed my previous tutorials, you know that filter chain is a collection of filters. So security filter chain is a collection of security filters. In the next video, I would provide more details of how those filters interact together to actually authenticate and authorize the user. But in this video, I want to explain the mechanism, how those filters are added to our application in the first place. To allow for various scenarios, which we're going to look in a minute, Spring doesn't actually put security filters directly into web servlet container, but rather uses two additional filters. If we're going to look at all the filters, we can see a new filter of type delegate and filter proxy. The sole job of this filter is to forward all incoming requests to a Spring security filter chain. Since we're dealing with a web servlet container that doesn't necessarily know about Spring, we need to have a bridge between the former and the latter. That's exactly what delegating filter proxy is all about. However, there's one more filter in between. Once the request reaches delegating filter proxy, it's then forwarded to filter chain proxy, and only then it reaches security filter chain. Filter chain's proxy's job is to load all security filter chains and match the request URL with the corresponding security filter chain. It may not seem important if we only have one security filter chain, but it becomes crucial if we have multiple to make sure that our requests are authenticated the way we intended to. Let me dive a little bit deeper here. If the application you are building is a microservice type of application, then most likely you're going to have one security filter chain. However, if you're working on a large monolith, then there is a high chance that you will have multiple. Usually, there is one security filter chain per authentication strategy. Let me give you an example. Root path or home can be used by UI users who is going to use cookies. Then we're going to have API path for newer clients who can use JWT tokens and maybe some custom authentication from a partner company who wants to integrate with us using their specific auth mechanism. To recap, once we add Spring Security to our application, it registers multiple security filters that perform various tasks. When our application receives the request, at some point, it's going to be intercepted by delegating filter proxy, which is going to forward this request to a filter chain proxy, which in turn is going to forward this request to a security filter chain. The latter is going to authenticate users via a special sequence of events, which is something that we're going to look into our next video. See you there.